All right, welcome back to Hotel Hell. We are in the Juniper Hill in part two. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of comps, so this one's really good. So hopefully, you know, this episode tickles my pickle and <laughs> it's a good time. Robert and Ari have alienated themselves from the town and the inn's appearance is completely deceiving. What is that smell? It smells like shit. It's like someone's shot under the bed. And instead of working with their employees... Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. And when I confronted Robert and Ari in front of everyone, all I got was excuses. I don't have a secretary, Gordon. I'm sorry. Are you always this pathetic? They don't have to work here. That is such an embarrassing question to be asked. Are you always this pathetic? Like, how do you even answer that not sounding more pathetic? <laughs> You know, like, fuck, that's, that's a lose-lose. Oh, and then you pompous fuck. Don't talk to me like that. You still haven't got it. Now, this place is sinking. Gordon, watch out, there's bugs. So far, my stay at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn has been shocking. Yeah, that smells like shit. And the root of... They've played that clip of him saying it smells like shit like 800 times. <laughs> I wonder if it smells like shit in there. I've seen with my own eyes how poorly this place is run. But now I need to see what happens to the bottom line. <laughs> when Robert and Ari use Juniper Hill as their own private playground, entertaining all their friends. I'm hoping the estate manager, Ryan, can help me. A lot of the staff are telling me their um, friends pop up from Manhattan and come and spend weekends and sit, drink, and be merry. Are these guys actually paying? Uh, no. Robert had a slew of friends come and stay for free and eat for free for weeks at a time, and that's why they've been losing money since I've been here. God, that's just like the that's the dumbest thing I've ever <laughs> I've ever heard. How, how does he? That just doesn't even make any sense. Although, also, like clearly, he could afford this at one point, and then he fucking spent it all on his little goodies. He he, I I, I know it's not gonna happen, but I hope there's like a giant yard sale by the end of this or something like something with all that shit. What do the colors mean? Help me understand that. Green means they're paid in full. Red means they have not paid. Oh my god. I have 50 room nights. That's between November and December. Well, just two average, months. they're $200 a night. But that's, it's like $10,000 in revenue. That's $10,000. They're running it in almost a clubhouse. like a clubhouse, almost like they're trying to buy friends. And Robert prides himself as the superior business person. Robert walks around like he's the king and that everybody hears a bunch of hicks. This is insane and this is like a private club for him. He's worked with the servers before and accepted a portion of the tips. Oh my god. Oh my god. Because he did a little bit of work, he's saying, well, I deserve some of the tips. I mean, I did, I broke a sweat. I broke a little bit of a sweat, guys. <laughs> I worked for, I carried a plate to a table. I deserve half your tips. That's, that's just fucking like, what a lunatic. To think that's, that's a normal thing to do? Fuck. He takes their tips. I gotta talk to him. How are we? Barbara, how are you today? Good. I just had an interest. Is it true that Robert takes a percentage of the tips? Yes. He does? Yeah. And what percentage of tips does he take? What we get. Can I get a percentage though? Because it's unclear what the amount of money is here. Because what if he's taking it? What if he's like going home with $2 here and you know, we, we don't know what the, you know what I mean? He gets the same as you. Yeah. It's really hard to keep track of the tips. I it, the, the bookkeeping it, it doesn't it seems inconsistent. But why is he touching the tips? He because did the same thing for New Year's. They felt that because they needed to cover part of the band that they took the tips off. Our of bot tip. That's why we don't make anything here. So the employees are paying the band. An owner has no right to take the staff's tips. And with all the room and food comps Robert is giving his friends, it's no wonder the inn is struggling. The staff shouldn't be subsidizing the inn so Robert and his friends get to live the high life for free. It's sickening. I have to confront him and... <laughs> Jump it up. Is he in there? Hey, it's me, Gordon. <laughs> Open the door. I just had a look round and I just... I, I, I am flabbergasted. I'm going to be really frank. I'm going to try to stay so calm. But if I smell BS that you start going into denial, I'm gonna let rip again. In the in the fucking next on last episode, in this RV, it, it seems like this is the conversation that he leaves and quits. This is fucking so early in the episode. There's no way he actually quits here. But th this is where the conversation ha and the next on. Last November, December, 49 rooms were given out for free. 49 of them. Holy shit, 40. So it's not like he had a couple friends stay over and they got to stay for free. 40 fucking, no I don't even know 49 people, fuck. And on top of that, they ate, they drank, 
for nothing. I'm not even tipping. Can you imagine your friend letting you stay at a hotel and then you're not even tipping the employees there at all? Like, his friends are assholes as well. And he's walking around, hey, hey, do not, don't tip them. Hey, don't give them a fucking cent. Don't give them anything, okay? Because if you give it to them, then I'm going to get a portion of it. So. <laughs> and I don't want you tipping me. And I'm just, what the fuck are you doing? Tell me why. I thought I needed to have somebody here. Rather than having two other guests in the hotel all by themselves, to have more energy. I thought if people were staying in the rooms, that just counted for something. <laughs> Even though no income was coming in, I just thought, you know, people were in the room sleeping. That amounted to something. No, You're I making it worse. Not only do your friends not leave tips, but when people do tip the staff, you take a share. On nights that I work. On nights that I work, Gordon, I broke a sweat. <laughs> I did take tips. That is disgusting. Why do you think you are right to that? I have tried to work with my staff to teach them that this is the way I want service done. You're so bad. I take a percentage of the tips based on the amount of work that I do. Yeah. And who does the books on those tips? Uh, Ari. Hmm. Hmm. Convenient. <laughs> Very convenient. <laughs> but if I'm doing their job and I can't get it across to them... You're the owner. You're not the head bus boy. You're not the barman. You're the fucking owner. What I was saying wasn't getting through. So the psychology was that if I started to take tips, they would maybe pay attention to that. So there was like a lesson, like maybe if I started taking tips from them, they would work harder. Cause then, you know, if they work harder and better, then I won't be working and then I won't be there to get the tips. What a fucking weird lesson. That is insane. It's the worst management model I've ever heard in my entire life. Do you honestly need a 70 year old lady's tips? No, no but it's really fun to take him. <laughs> You should see the look on her face when I take her tips. So, 15, 20 grand worth of complimentary rooms in food in a two month period. I'm just, well, it doesn't I, make sense. I have to tell you that the reason Please. I did that was because I thought that they would at least tip my staff. But they didn't tip your staff. Okay, maybe, you know, hey buddies, you guys can stay here, but you know, maybe tip the staff while you're here. Maybe tell them that. Don't be like, I just assumed they were tipping them. I didn't even bother to look or ask if they were getting tipped. Sorry to piss on your bonfire. Well, then I will call my friends and I will tell them. Well, I will call them right now and I'll have them write checks to every single employee here. Would you like that, Gordon? Actually, that'd be kind of a sick move if he did that. Look, what happened? You haven't got the fucking balls to call your friends and ask them to leave a tip. Yes, I do. Call them then. <laughs> oh my fucking God. You don't have the balls to call your friends. I fucking love him calling him out like that. Well, I wonder if he's actually gonna call his friends and like yell at them. Like, hey, I t why didn't you leave a tip on my hotel? And they're like, I don't know. You fucking didn't ask me to. I don't know. You let me stay there for free. Never had me tip before. I, d I do have the balls. I, I I'll show you I have the balls. He's like, <phone rings> oh, it, he's busy. Sorry, I guess, guess I can't yell at him. He's busy. We'll call him later. Call him then. Jesus, look at that fucking ancient phone he has. <laughs> God, get a fucking iPhone 10, loser. And ask them, I thought at least, out of generosity, you would have left a couple hundred dollars tip for the team. Hello? Dana? Oh, of course, he calls a girl to yell at. <laughs> yeah? It's Robert, you stayed here recently, and um, I was under the impression that you and Greg left a tip. Did you leave a tip? No, no, no. But no, 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 not that part. I'm talking about the tip that you're supposed to leave for the employee. Shut the fuck up. Don't talk about that part. Um, did you leave a tip in the room before you left? You said you were going to send additional tip. I think my time's done here. He heard that. Fuck. They tipped him. That's unbelievable. So his friends have been probably tipping him the entire time, and that probably helps how he buys antiques. That was one of the things that I was hoping you had done. Um, if I didn't do what I was supposed to do, I'm very sorry, and I'll... Oh, I left the no, money no, no. with you. Well, wait a minute. There's others to call, too. Well, hold on, Gordon. I can call other people as well. Fuck you, Dana. You fucked me. I'm gonna send Ari after you. How about that? Gordon. Oh, dear. Gordon has left. He thinks I'm stealing my staff's tips. Yo, there's a fucking lot of this episode left. I wonder what the fuck's gonna happen. Unbelievable. Judge. Hey, Ray, it's Robert. Did you tip the staff? Because they're telling people that they haven't been tipped. I left the money with you. Oh, so I need to do that. Oh, my God. 
were they tipping him to tip the staff? And he's like, oh, fuck, I thought this was my tip. I thought everybody was getting like $100,000. I, I somehow lost that fucking idiot. Gordon left thinking I'm a liar. In reality, I'm just a fucking idiot. <laughs> I thought that my friends were giving me money. It turns out they were paying my staff. I feel as if I'm, I'm at the end of my rope. I mean, I'm gonna lose everything. I'm gonna have to start all over again if this doesn't work. And I just don't seem that I can, can do it anymore. <laughs> no, I can't do it. Mm, poor you. <laughs> Fingers crossed, you know, it could turn out good. I just left Juniper Hill after catching Robert in a lie about his staff getting tips. He got, that is the funniest way to get caught in a lie. Oh, oh yeah, I'll call my friends right now. <phone rings> hey, were, 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 did you tip before you left? Yeah, I gave you the money. Oh yeah, you tipped me. Why the fuck did I call Dana? Fuck. <laughs> I'm so pissed off with Robert right now. Honestly, I cannot stand any more of his bloody lies. This guy doesn't even deserve the team. That is in his hotel. He treats everyone so badly. When you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu, he doesn't even pay them properly. I had to wait five weeks before I got a paycheck. I work very long days yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. How can someone so rich not pay the people he employs? Because he's so fucking stupid. He, every time he gets a paycheck, he's like, oh, cool, this one's for me. I'm going to buy a lamp with this one. Oh, I'll put this in my storage shed real quick. Like, fuck. That's something I simply won't stand for. As anger. Oh shit! You fucking see that sick move he did? That was like a Vin Diesel move. Fucking Gordon's got moves. Angry as I am, I feel I have to help the staff get paid, and I have an idea of just how to do it. I'm going to hire a team of white club movers to assemble all of Robert's most valuable antiques from the storage units, the basement, and around the inn. I'm hoping when confronted with all the money he's wasted, I can convince Robert to sell some of his vast collection to pay his staff. Okay, well, I mean, I feel like I predicted that happening. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> I must stay calm while I talk to Robert. Um, I've come back. Not for you, but for the staff. They deserve better. We're losing on average fifteen to $20,000 a month. And we are short. But you have a serious hobby of sort of an art collector, an art dealer. I mean, you could open a museum. How many pieces do you have in there? Oh my God, hundreds. What are we talking about? Everything collectively. All those beautiful oil paintings, the expensive stuff. At a suitable auction, um, maybe $300,000. That is just unbelievable. And he's fucking losing money in this place. It doesn't know what to do, but you could, oh, probably like $300,000 I could get for this. But, eh, maybe, maybe, and I might be able to get that. $300,000, and that would supplement you for the next 12 months, 18 months? Yes, that would certainly get us through, that would get us through two years. Um, right, there's something I want you to see. Oh, he's gonna show him his penis. <laughs> this is where Gordon Ramsay's gonna show him his penis. Okay, I'd like you to come with me, please. If there's one thing we need right now, is an injection of funds. Wow. Robert, no man alive needs this much stuff. Walking in, it was shocking. I don't even remember buying any of this shit. This is crazy. Now, antiques, oil paintings, silverware. Does it not, I mean, frustrate you that we're sat with all this and yet we can't pay our staff properly? There's someone I'd like you to meet. Is it his penis? <laughs> I gotta give that up. She's the head auctioneer at Bonhams in Boston. Amy, good morning. Good morning, Gordon. How long was she standing back there for? Just wait, waiting for her cue, waiting for him to say Amy holding her clipboard. Uh, nice to see you. Gordon, great to see you. Likewise, thank you so much for coming. Um, we're in the shit, basically, and this stuff needs to go. We need to raise as much money as possible. So what's the best price we can get for all this stuff? What you have here doesn't read as a collection to me, it's kind of an accumulation. If I'm looking at your stuff, it kind of just seems like a lot of random piles of shit. It's not really uh, collection pieces. A lot of copies of things, or if they are right. of the period that they're supposed to be, there's some condition issues. Oh, for fuck's sake. Um. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Fuck, even this is fucked up. Houston, we have a problem. I would say 
About 25,000. Oh my god, that is so much lower than what he thought. How embarrassing. Yeah, maybe like 300,000, probably. Say that again? Um, pardon, one more time? 25,000. $25,000. All this? All this. Uh, he just, he, he totally just farted again. Uh, prepare to smell the plumbing issue. Amy's opinion on our, our things was shocking. And I can't really believe that. He thinks Amy's a fucking liar. I'll tell you what right now, Amy never lies, okay? Trust me, Amy never lies. And the painting? The painting is a copy. And not a good one, I'm afraid. And <laughs> not even a good one? Oh my god. I bet he spent a lot of money on that fucking fake. How much is that worth? I can't imagine what someone would pay for it. It's it's really very low value. Wow. Robert, I thought you said it was expensive, uh, 18th century. Well, it's dated. I dated 17th. It is, but it's not actually of that period at all. Holy fuck, what a- Oh my god, that is so fucking embarrassing, dude. How much did he spend on that? Did you know that was a copy? I did not know that that was a copy. Um, no, I, um, was not aware that that was a copy, actually. <laughs> Lots of copies. Reproductions. Reproductions. We were hoping in the ballpark of three to four hundred thousand. Twenty-five grand for everything. Yeah. That won't even get us through the next five weeks. I mean, he, is this all of his shit? Because he had four storage sheds and a basement, like, is it 25000 for everything? Because that's fucking nuts. Even all this amazing silverware. I put $100 on everything on this table. $100? What about this? First period, this is Sheffield. Yeah, it's plate. <laughs> Holy fuck, nothing he got is real. Nothing. What about this? 175 bucks. Th those are Vakar candlesticks? They just don't bring very much at auction, I'm afraid. Uh, is this the kind of collection that you'd be willing to sell at Bottoms? Would you take the whole lot? No, we wouldn't. Wow. We would have to say no. I don't want a single fucking thing from here, actually, okay? You, this stuff smells like shit. We're floating as if we've got this asset full of three or four hundred thousand dollars worth of antiques. We haven't, and we're distracted with the bits of crap in here. It was a wake-up call. That was, fuck. It is insane that that is what he needed for a fucking wake-up call. It means that we don't have the backup that we thought we had. We paid more money for fucking storage. How, has, he, has he never ever thought about getting this stuff evaluated or anything? He's just like, eh, one day I'll try to sell it and it's gonna be worth $300,000 because, you know, I, that's kind of like what I spent on it. They're worth. Then they're worth. Does that not bring it home a little bit earlier that you need to be an innkeeper, not a part-time antiques dealer? Yo, that's a fucking bar right there, Gordon Ramsay. Damn, I didn't know we could spit bars like that. Because you fooled me. You give me the tour, and I thought, wow, this guy is, uh, he's got serious cash to burn. But right now, we're even further in the shit than I thought we were. So the pressure intensifies. Yep. You need to focus on fixing the business, because that's what's going to generate sufficient funds to keep this place open. And I don't think you quite realize that your staff they're miserable. I don't know how he doesn't realize it. They all fucking, they look miserable every time we see them. They don't like Ari's barking. Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse me. One. I am the boss. You bitching. When you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the goddamn internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu. It's not a nice atmosphere for the staff currently. And if they quit, you're fucked. I mean, they're probably all gonna quit the second they hear that he was stealing all their tips. They are staff. They're not pigs that live in the fucking basement. If you think that's not the case, and you're that delusional, and you're not prepared to listen to anything I'm saying, you're fucked. Sell the inn, sell this shit in here, and give up. <laughs> Just come back to try and save Juniper Hill Inn and I thought I could use some of the owner's vast array of antiques to get the cash flowing. But I've just discovered... I would say about $25,000. $25,000. God, that just is just so fucking embarrassing. I can't believe it. All of his shit is worth nothing. <laughs> like, can you imagine that? Your fucking husband spent, like, all of his retirement on these, this shit for you, and you thought this was, like, your retirement plan if your hotel didn't work? Nothing. Before I get stuck in, there's one thing I want to try. Yo, we finally got it again, baby. Yeah, some Gordon booty. It's bloody roasting. Oh, fuck, my feet are freezing now. 
This is the best. That that's the best part of the show right there. I don't. I why is that in the show? I have no idea. But oh, it's the best fucking part. Morning. Now it's time to see if I can get through to Robert and Ari. Can I just borrow you for two minutes? I want to show you something. Yes, yeah, sure. both of you together. I'd like to come up to my uh, room. <laughs> he brings him up there. Gets back in the bath. <laughs> books his little toes out. That'd be kind of cute. Thank you. If this place is going to work as a business. Robert and Ari need to hear some home truths oh. about how their paying customers really feel about their precious in. Oh, I kind of, I honestly forgot about this part of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for uh, popping into my room. <laughs> how was your stay last night? Well, we didn't know where to go when we walked in, so we walked around and around until we found somebody to help us check in. I was slightly disorientated when I checked in as well. I mean, there's no signs in terms of reception, no. front desk, or bar, or lounge, or... And how were the rooms? I had space heaters to keep the room up. Oh, really? Yeah. When I checked the room, it was like a sauna. When I checked the room, it was like a sauna. It was fucking hot in there. I couldn't stop sweating, so I don't know how they were freezing in there. When I checked the room, my balls were dripping in sweat, so I don't know how these guys were freezing. He okay, sounds activated. Raise your hands if you come back, please. Not like it is. Oh, some not like it is. So like, you would come back. You like the place, but just not how not how it currently is. <laughs> I come back if you change a few things. Not like it is. There's someone I'd like to hear from who hasn't said anything yet. He is a lead inspector of the diamond collection of hotel and inns across America. In a nutshell, very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. From the moment I walked in, with no greeting, no check-in area, I was totally lost. And the bar's a joke. You should not even be there, folks. It looks as if it's set up for a wedding. The hospitality is nice, but everything else fails. <laughs> the staff's pretty nice. Well, that's about it. The staff's pretty nice. <laughs> How do you feel? I don't want my guests to have that experience. You know, our goal is to please people. That's why we're in the in-business. And we've obviously fallen really short. Um, For me, I think that's positive feedback. So I'm grateful entirely. Let me tell you. Thank you all. Can I uh, keep you two here, please? Thank you. I mean, honestly, I've heard worse things in the room, so they, they got they got off nice with those people. He didn't even pull out the lights and start showing all the cum in the room, so they, they really got off light. <laughs> Why are you so angry with guests? Why are you running an inn when you're so bitter? You look like you don't give a shit. I'm not saying that I don't like the guests, but uh, if you have ever been an innkeeper, it's 24 seven. No one is more touched by what these people said. Well, are you? I mean, clearly, that's, uh... I would love this to be our, our private home. He, he would love for this to be their private home. Jesus Christ. But. I am. It's a lost cause. And Ari does have a different way of dealing sure. with I things. see that. Based on my experience, I would seriously request both of you actually sit down and reconsider whether you should be in this business going forward. Oh, we'll certainly consider it. That's for sure. We will consider it. It's clear to me that Ari isn't cut out for the hospitality business. And even though Robert now understands how he's let down his guests. He needs to understand that he's also let down his staff and failed to recognize their potential. I've got a plan that will help Robert to see what he's doing. Oh, he's getting naked again. Holy shit. <laughs> doing wrong and how he can fix things in his kitchen. Oh, he's just getting dressed. Okay. Whew, I don't know if I could handle that again. I gotta get into uniform. Give me a minute. <laughs> That's like a superhero outfit. I've asked Chef Julian to cook three dishes from Robert's expensive old menu and three new dishes of his very own creation. Once he's finished, we're going to pretend I cook the new ones and see what Robert says. Crucially, Julian's dishes are all ones that could be served on a $29 menu, half what Robert currently charges. Look at that. $74. $29. This is pretty funny. They're gonna, they're gonna be like, gotcha. This <laughs> Gordon can cook this motherfucker. That guy did. The guy you've been yelling at, the fucking chef. He cooked it. Or he's gonna hate it, and this is gonna fall apart and be pretty embarrassing. <laughs> Let's go. Good luck. Okay. Yes. I can't wait to see what Robert thinks of Julian's affordable food when he thinks that I've cooked it. I asked him to cook a three-course meal. Yeah, he cooked his lamb, his crab cake, and the dessert. That's the $74 version. I cooked the other meal. I got hold of some chicken, some sprouts, and I used the crab and a butterscotch pudding with some caramelized popcorn. $29, that's what those three courses are gonna cost. Yeah. He sold it pretty good. Okay. Julian's three new dishes are fantastic and fairly priced. That would go a long way towards bringing guests back through the front door. Now that Robert thinks I've cooked them, I bet he loves them. Talk to me, what? Excellent. Fabulous. And the um, Brussels sprouts are really good too. Mm -hmm. You've actually leafed them and mm -hmm. it's very pretty. Mm -hmm. well, this is a much better value. 
I've never heard you use that word value. Although I, it kind of just feels like he's just being like, yep, mm-hmm, yeah, sure, Gordon, yep. Like he's just gonna say yes and like, like be with everything. And we could get two for the price of one. What we should do. So my menu or Julian's menu? Your menu. My menu. Now, I'm flattered, but there's something I need to tell you. I didn't make any of this. Julian cooked everything. I felt at that very moment that I had done Julian a disservice. Oh, wow, wow. I can't believe he honestly fucking said that. Wow. Robert, have you got something you'd like to say to your chef, Julian? I'm sorry that I haven't given you the freedom to do what you need to do. I guess I have to eat it and say that I have restricted him from being who he can be, which is, is really difficult. Wow, well fucking good on you, Robert. Good on you for doing that, pal. Now, now can he can he get some money? Can he get a can he get a tip now? He did double the work here. And um, I have to say that this is delicious. Now that owner Robert's heard from the guests. Very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. And sampled the kind of affordable, high quality food his chef can cook when given the chance. Excellent. Fabulous. He does just seem like a broken man, though, at this point now. He just seems so broken. <laughs> I hope this is all started to sink in with him. Now, why couldn't they just remove those the book off that table instead of just fucking having to blur it out? You feeling? I'm feeling all sorts of things. I mean, there's, of course, fear. But surely hope, too. Your chef's food was amazing. Absolutely. It was an epiphany. I feel regretful that I have come across in the way I have, and that I haven't exhibited to my staff the leadership they needed and the compassion that apparently I'm, I must be void of. I think for you to tell them how you're feeling, what you're gonna commit to, how important they are for you, I know that this place wouldn't be here without them. I gotta say, I, was, I mean, maybe this, I know this is gonna maybe get worse, I don't know. Getting a little happy and that's, that's making me sad. You are all valuable to me, and to Ari, and to Juniper Hill, and I fear that we have not always expressed that. And we want to show you that we are going to make a difference. Sorry for your paychecks being late. Sorry for taking part of the tips. Sorry for not communicating, because that was the reality and one that I'm not proud of, that we're not proud of, but one that we certainly can correct, and that's what we want to do. The business is short of cash flow. I thought there was a substantial collection of three to four hundred thousand dollars worth of assets. I mean, why don't you explain exactly? <laughs> why don't you tell them that it was all fake and that you bought a bunch of bullshit? And the things that were assembled here, um, they said, lucky if we got 25,000. We are on our ass. It is going to be difficult. And I think Robert has realized the bubble's burst. And he understands the truth to where we are. I think there's a perception that we are these wealthy magnets coming in and Lord of the Manor sort of. Gee, I wonder where they got that perception from. You fucking pranced around like you were a rich little kitty cat the whole fucking time. Things. That's not who we are. You know, I knew there were some um, bad situations here. But I stayed because I want to be here, and I want to help him, and uh, I believe what he says. And I'm very proud of you, Robert. You're the man that I've always known and loved. This is just becoming wholesome now. It's He's coming back. I'm glad to see that, you know, we're facing facts, and uh, that's the only way we're going to get out of this. Agreed. Thank you. Ryan, what do you think of what Robert just said? I wanted to stand up and clap. I did, too. Okay, okay, come on, shut the fuck up. Let's not give him that much fucking credit. <laughs> I feel like I'm working for somebody who can actually run a business when I hear things like that. Okay, okay, shut the fuck up, guys. He, he, said, he said sorry, that's all. That can succeed. I've never seen Robert so serious. This is actually really a life-changing thing for him. I thought he was going to say a life-changing moment for him. I was about to be like, what the fuck, dude? God, when Robert just said that speech, it fucking changed my life. Like, fuck, I'm a different person after that. And I feel like I want to be part of the changes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank the you truth's boy. important. It's humbling to have to admit some of the things that haven't gone right. 
but at the same time, it's energizing to see that people really do care for us and care for Juniper Hill. That is what's going to make us successful. I'm impressed with the way Robert dealt with his staff meeting. I've got real hope that he can make this place work, but he has another lesson to learn. He thinks people aren't spending money at Juniper Hill because of the recession, but I think it's the snobbish atmosphere and the high prices that have kept people away. I mean, yeah, the, little, the first lady you asked last episode was like, I don't know, I feel like I'd be intruding up there with all the rich people. I feel um, that I'd be interrupting. I feel like I'd be intruding. Oh, really? What a shame. I mean, they won't beat you up. <laughs> You are like a fish out of water right now, honestly. <laughs> You're like a vegetarian in the middle of a big steak tartare. Look at you. <laughs> no, no. Well, I love the people from our region. The Upper Valley is filled with amazing people. The Juniper Hill is not I filled know. with local people. Wouldn't you welcome this atmosphere? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, Ari would fucking hate it, though. <laughs> Ari's going to throw a bitch fit if that happens. Absolutely. Everyone is welcome. Stand on there and tell them you need them. Off we go. If I could have your attention, please. I'm Robert. I'm the innkeeper at Juniper Hill Inn. We just want to tell everybody we'd love to have you all up at Juniper Hill Inn. And uh, we need the help right now. So if you can come up and have dinner or just have a drink and just say hi, it would be great. Thank you. Thanks. That, I didn't like that at all. I get the point of that, but that was that was a bit gross. When was the last time you brought Ari here for a beer? We haven't been here probably in six months. How was he after you spoke to the team like that? You know, the, the, the interesting thing with Ari is yeah. his exterior is Finnish. You know, he's very stern. stern. But he's like a cuddly little teddy bear in the inside, and that's what I love about him. But he feels deeply. He can't express it, though, can he? He can't. He's emotionally constipated. I think he gave up. That can't come across to the staff. That can't come across the customer, so yeah. you, you've got to almost isolate yourself from that. But he's getting through it. But he's not going to be the face. He's not going to be the ink. No, he's not. But he can provide a phenomenal amount of support behind the scenes. Cheers to that. Uh, we're going to hide Ari. That's the plan. We're going to keep Ari away from everybody here and just hide him in the background like a little gerbil. Overnight, my team has been working on a remarkable transformation. And with relaunch upon us, it's a chance for a fresh start for everyone. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. 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 Let me introduce you to the new... Juniper Hill Inn. It's no longer a hangout for the super rich or your mates getting freebies. Yeah, it's now a nice, warm, and very welcoming country inn. Please, come in. Come through. The Great Hall is a beautiful room, but it was hidden by vast amounts of furniture. Oh, my That's goodness. Nice. Look at this. My team have edited the collection and created a feeling of comfort and space. When I walked in the Great Hall, it felt like a different room. Okay, I might sound like a fucking idiot here, but it doesn't look that different to me right here. Gordon put together this amazing place. It feels comfortable and warm. You have a spacious, gracious, warm reception room. Look at it. Gone is that hideous makeshift bar. I know the guy mentioned it earlier, but I forgot how fucking pathetic that bar looked. Gone. <laughs> Guess nowhere to go because they have proper signs. That is just so fucking dumb that Gordon Ramsay had to be the one to come in and put signs where to go in the fucking place. Like, why wasn't that one of the first things you guys did there? You see the dining room? Yes. yes. Come through. Oh, it's it's warm beautiful. and welcoming. Ooh, I like this room. The, I, that looks really nice. So oh, I love this. No longer feels like your grandmother's parlor. It really is a dining room. It's what you expect from a country inn. But yeah, it has an identity. Right. Gone are those hideous sofas that <laughs> nobody can sit and eat dinner in. Although the sofa's still a funny idea. I still kind of like the sofa. Ari, what do you think? Very nice. Very you nice. like it? Very open. Excellent. Um, sorry, what was that? I'm just listening to my audio book. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The place is very nice. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> Show you my bedroom. Okay. Please. <laughs> Everybody else can come too, please. You ready? We're ready. In you go. Do you know what's wrong with this room? Nothing. You don't need to do anything to them. The only thing wrong was the smell in room one. <laughs> Yay, it doesn't smell like shit anymore. No, I, I guess it wasn't his farts. I guess we learned that. The guest rooms are the absolute highlight of your inn. That meant something, because it meant we were on the right track. We just needed a, a, a better directions. Now, the key to filling this is to charge sensible prices. I would rather have the room sold at Absolutely. a cheaper price and have an 85% occupancy rate across the year. Bring the yeah. prices down, fill it, let them enjoy this quality. And 
The stunning bedrooms didn't need changing, but there's one room that did need a significant overhaul in order to bring in much needed cash flow. Now, there's one more little thing I want to show you downstairs. Okay. No, that's his penis. That definitely has to be his penis. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Come with me. Okay. We need to attract the local community. I'd like to welcome you to the blue bar. Whoa, he built them a blue bar? Whoa. Blue bar. Ari, aren't you thrilled? Ari, aren't you thrilled? You got your own bar now, Ari. Sorry, what was that? Oh, yes, this bar is very nice. I really like the bar. He just doesn't give a fuck about anything. The best new local bar in Windsor. Fantastic. This is so great. Walk in and see the people sitting there and the games on the tables and the beautiful drinks. It was very emotional. I loved it. The Blue Bar is exactly what the town of Windsor, Vermont and Juniper Hill Inn need. Okay, and I feel like he's just mocking me every time he says Vermont now. I'm hoping it'll be popular, especially on a day like today, when the inn hosts its first ever Sunday lunch service. The staff are all getting ready for the arrival of their lunch guests. Five, six, seven, eight. Six, Five, six, six seven, eight. Got four tables each. But while everybody else is busy, Ari seems lost and needs reminding of his role here at the inn. He's just walking around holding a pot. <laughs> what the fuck is he doing? Hey, what do I put this? I don't know where. I don't know where this pot go. Oh, the kitchen. Sorry, sorry. I guess I'll go put it in the kitchen. I'm here. Oh, jeez. Right. Okay. What Had to go the doing? other way. Are you in? Are you out? Are you doing the checks? What are you doing? I was checking in people. You're That's... checking in. But I thought that was the gracious. I thought you were checking in people. You want to check them in and Shut take up. them up? That'll be uh, great. Would Thanks. you be so kind? Just two yes. seconds. I'm so sorry. Would you continue that? Of course. Can I just have you for 30 seconds? Yeah, sure. Totally. I thought you were going to leave the front of the house to Robert. I thought you were going to hide in the shadows. I, I didn't think you were going to be up there talking to people. You know, like, pretend you're a Dracula. Just stay in the shadows. I thought you were going to be the back of the house. No, one thing is that Robert asked me to, to check in people but, uh, because he had to... Uh, he just is, I don't know if he is lying, but it, the way he's... It, it sounds like he's lying. Take people to the dining room. <sighs> yeah, I know, but... We have a saying in England, yes. too many chefs spoil the broth. You're not a natural innkeeper. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay, that's all you had to say. I, I completely understand. Sorry. I'll, I'll be in the back. <laughs> Fuck, Gordon, that's all you, you just had to tell me that I was a fucking dick. I, I didn't even realize it. He needs your help. Yes. But yes, behind the scenes. Yes. Explain to Robert that you're gonna support him from behind the scenes. Yes. Please? Okay. Sure. Please. I will do that. I think Ari has finally got the picture and understands that he needs to play to his strengths. I really hope that things can continue to improve now. Come on, Sophie. We better remove the dog. She's gonna eat the food. <laughs> She's just chasing a fucking dog around the uh, in the bar. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Sophie, our poodle, she shouldn't be in there. I mean, it's a it's a place where we eat. Come on, Sophie. Come on, come, come, come. That's not for you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, honey. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> he always says it the same. Come on, come on. I take come care come. of the dog, okay? I'll have to take care of the dog. Don't fucking touch my dog, okay? I know how you treat dogs. You're always trying to nibble on my dog's ears. Fuck you. Excuse me. The dog shouldn't be in the bar. He's on the seats eating the food. Really? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, run, lady. He's gonna fucking get you. I am the boss, okay? What Don't ever say? talk to me that way again. Oh. Excuse me. Don't ever, and I mean it. I'll be in my room, and I don't need to be yelled at. I'm coming towards the end of my stay at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I thought we'd turn the corner. But as the inn's first ever Sunday lunch service approaches, assistant innkeeper Sarah has gone missing. She's gone missing? Oh, fuck. Where is she? I don't know, I saw her walking outside in the forest, and then all of a sudden she was gone. It beats me. If you see a blood trail down the street, don't go following. Where's Sarah gone? I haven't seen Sarah in about a half an hour. Is she okay? I don't know. You don't know? Okay, just asking. Has Sarah gone home? What? Has Sarah gone home? No. The team can't afford to be a man down. I've got to find her. Who is that? It's me, Sarah's Gordon. Oh, hi, Gordon. You okay? Oh, no. Uh, what? Hold on a second. Dear, oh, dear. Danny, I thought you joined us for lunch. Oh, thanks. I'm not going to. What's the matter? You want to come in? Yeah, you look terrible. What's the matter? Oh, I'm just really oh, upset. Fine. I don't want... Um, nothing. I just got yelled at and it fucking really hurt my feelings, so... That's all. You're upset. You were with us half an hour ago. Customers were in the bar. I know. And my they... first table just arrived and I just expect you to be there in terms of... 
You're part of this team. I know, but I, I'm sick of being yelled at by Ari. I'm sick of it, Gordon. When did he yell at you? Just a few minutes ago, because I asked him to take the dog out of the dining room. Naturally. It's his dog, and it's sitting on the bar furniture. Okay. Please come back down. Oh. Buck up and come down. Nobody's ever seen me break down in tears in this end. It's never happened before. Yeah, now the whole fucking world has seen you break down in tears. Just come back downstairs. OK. Please? Yeah, I will. Gordon. OK. Yeah, I want to help I don't the want girls. to see you upset. And the girls need you down there. They do, and I'm just, I'm just really <laughs> mad at them. No, well, let me go and have a word with Ari. This is ridiculous. Get yourself ready. Place is full of locals, and they'd love to see you too. OK. Please. Uh, Smiley. Yes? Yes. Yes, I'll bounce back. I'm not sure why Ari is snapping at his staff, but it just proves my gut was right about his place being behind the scenes. Ari? Yes? I've just found Sarah upstairs in floods of tears. Everything OK? No, we had a little run-in because we both are very strong people. What the fuck does that mean? I, g I gotta hear that again. What exactly did he fucking say? Ari? Yes? I've just found Sarah upstairs in floods of tears. Everything OK? No, we had a little run-in because we both are very strong people. She snapped at me and I snapped back. Mm-hmm. Do you think the dog should be running around in the bar? No, no when they are guests. So was she right or wrong? She was right. What the fuck? She was right. I just wanted to yell at her, okay? I like yelling at women. It makes me really happy to yell at women. Would it be appropriate for you to apologize to her? Do you, do you oh, feel yeah. that you're responsible from behind the scenes? Is there any way we could just, for this first Sunday lunch, sure. try to keep the team together? Okay. Okay, I will apologize to her. I will yell at her later, but I will apologize to her right now. I think Ari's heart is in the right place, but his tone is all wrong for an innkeeper. I don't. What the fuck am I? Well, who are you meeting? It's not just his tone. He literally admitted she was right and then go, but I yelled at her anyways because, you know, I must come back. And I need to remind Chef Julian to make good use of his sous chef Nida if he's going to have any chance of being successful. Have we even seen this? Have we seen Nina this whole episode? What the fuck? Who? Where did she come from? I know you're adamant the fact that you're going to work on your own, but you're not a one man band. Yeah? Yes, yeah, Chef. Sure. Encourage, entice. Over to the stove. The local community have responded to Robert's invitation and there's a great atmosphere. As people turn up to check out the bar and sample the new menu I put together with Chef Julian. Tara, nice to see you. Welcome to Juniper Hill. Hi, Hi Arya dear. Nice Hi. to see you. As well as new arrivals, the inn has a return guest, Hotel Inspector Steve Talon. Oh, let's see what he thinks. His first visit was a disaster. Very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. From the moment I walked in, with no greeting, I was totally lost. Okay, you really don't need a flashback to that. I mean, we just saw that like 10 minutes ago. I mean, like if you're watching the show and you don't, you're not following along that what, he didn't like it before, why are you even watching it? This is Robert and his team's chance to prove to Steve that they've learned their lesson. I hope this time Hello they're there. flawless. He's like, oh, nice. I see you put science up this time. Very good. <laughs> Check mark that off the list. Okay, what's going next? Coming up next, we have one trout. The key to this place running smoothly is communication among the entire staff. But Chef Julian still doesn't seem to get that. How long for the first flat iron, please, Nita? Medium rare. Gordon, didn't it look like Gordon was like gonna shove her into the food? Or, it's like he's gonna like fry her. Medium rare. It really looks like he's like, you, shove her into there. <laughs> Let's cook Nina. Talk to Nita. I don't care what it's about, the fucking weather, I don't care, but talk to her, okay? Come on, you gotta talk. I just said, come on. She can put things on a plate for you, just refusing to talk to her. And it's gonna be so fucking painful now. I simplified the menu in order to get it so much easier for you, you know that? Yes, Chef. And the menu was designed for you to open up and talk, okay? Yes, Chef. Look at me, look yes, at chef. broaden your mind out. And all you do is one plate, focus. Next plate, focus. And I just want you to open up a little bit. She's there to help. Thank you. You know what, let me do this. This motherfucker just doesn't get it. Talk to Nina. Work with Nina. Let me do this by myself, okay? I'm going to do this. Let me do this, Nina. You just do the dishes. How about that, okay? I'll do this. Just help with the skillet. Help with the skillet. Fucking hell. Julian! Yes, come here. Fucking hell. What's the matter with you? You've just shut down on me. Now, do you want to give me your jacket? And I'll do it for you. Actually, Chef, that would be amazing. I have to shit so bad. If you could just take my <laughs> take my shirt for a minute, please. No, Chef. It's not difficult. I know, Chef. Can you do this? Open up. Come on. You just shut down. With Robert working well with the team. Okay, thank you so much. And Ari staying out of the way. <laughs> they just made Ari walk the dog outside. Hey, you go walk the dog for a bit, okay? We're gonna run the we're gonna run the hotel today. The bar is bustling. How are you? Welcome. What can I get you to drink? 
But Chef Julian needs to raise his game and start communicating. If we're gonna make today a success. You've just shut down on me. Open up, please. Get it together. Let's go. So you do one plate, I do one plate. Is that good? All right, so then you get, with the lamb shank, then you get some lamb glaze, which is right here. Well, there we go. Now there's some communication with Nina. Nice. Much better. Look yes, at me. Yes, much chef. better. Yes, Chef. Good. How is everybody out there? Check, check, out. Out. check out. Check out. Wow. Oh my god, what, why is she gonna stab that woman setting the plates down? Where was Gordon Ramsay to watch that? That woman almost stabbed someone. Yes, that was wonderful. It's very good. I was very surprised. Perfect. That's what you're saying. It's perfect. Great. Right. Time to see if the hotel inspector has to. Oh, he's Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Recognize a few changes? In some ways, I didn't recognize it at all. I really felt so good. What the uh, entrance hall in terms of? The total openness, mm -hmm. the welcoming, but the signs everywhere. When you walked in, was it warm? Was it right? Oh, it's great warmth. Oh. Now I feel it, like, it has that diamond collection yeah. feel. Yeah. Is that a good job? Yeah. Enjoy lunch. Appreciate it. Pork's amazing. Okay. Thank you. I'm trying. Thank you. There's a great buzz at the inn. Sir, can I have a second? Oh boy, here we go. We're gonna let's see how Ari apologizes. I'm really busy. I just want to hear that. I'm sorry about what happened. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Okay. I mean, okay. I'm trying to help, Ari, oh, no. and you're, you're snarling yeah. me a lot. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. That's fucking it? That's all he's gonna fucking do? That was the, the lamest apology I've ever fucking heard. This food is affordably priced. It's really, really tasty. And it's nice to know a nice yeah. place to send people to right. get a drink and relax yeah. and everything, and that's hard in the area, so that's great. Okay, these, these do not feel like honest reviews. Robert and Ari's communication has improved by leaps and bounds since I've been at the inn. Let's go back just for a second. But actions speak louder than words, and I think Robert is starting to understand that. I just wanted to tell you that um, I really appreciate all the extra effort you're given. Not just this week, but the entire time you've been here. And this is your paycheck. Bit early, because we know you need it. We wish we had more. We put $100 extra in there for you, just so you have a little bit extra. Well, that's really sweet, honestly. I, I, I'm surprised he did that. I, oh, wow. <laughs> I got nothing else. That's just, that's just really sweet. Because we really do appreciate you, Ryan. So, thanks. Thank you very much. Although, what if they just started making out now? Wouldn't that be fucking cute? <laughs> you and I are gonna bring this back and Ari's gonna join us. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been that emotionally moved in a long time. I, I feel like it's all been worth it now. I just, I feel like I just appreciate it. What a week. I think this business is on the road to recovery and Robert and his team with Ari in the background can really make this place work. With Ari out back walking the dog, and this place is gonna run well. As once the locals invest in this place, word is gonna spread big time. Wow. Beautiful. It's time for me to say my goodbyes, but with the crowd enjoying themselves in the bar and loving the great value in the dining room, it's a hard place to leave. Uh, right, finally. You seem to have got this under control, yes? Yes, Chef. And you're opening up? Yes, Chef. Don't stop talking. Yes, Chef. Communicate. Good job. Thank you, Chef. He might have beat a few people down, but then he brought a few people right back up, and uh, that was necessary. I'm just glad he didn't smack me with a spatula. Ooh, that would have been a little kinky. Ari? Sobby. I've come to say goodbye. I was uh, doing Look my paychecks. Yourself. You're writing paychecks? Yes. Good luck with the place. It's a business. Absolutely. Look after yourself. Uh -huh. Look after Robert uh -huh. and support him in all the right places. From behind the scenes, specifically from behind the scenes, don't want you up there. Thank you. Best wishes. We are very grateful for him that he has patience for us. <laughs> because it, it's not uh, easy to restructure molded minds. Look after yourself. Yes? Look after yourself. My, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. And it seems like you've got this under control. I'm going to keep it under control. Well. We'll see. We'll certainly see, bitch. The staff are doing the job. The bar's functioning. The dining room's functioning. Kitchen's functioning. That's good. That's beautiful. Ari's in the RV. <laughs> they just keep fucking shoving Ari away. This is working. This is working. This is working. Ari's in the RV hiding. Everything's going smoothly. And there are people. And they seem to be having a good time. You're on the track now. We're on track. I got a little present for you. Stay there. Now this is his penis. <laughs> This has got to be his dick, right? Having Gordon come to Juniper Hill has meant a lot to us. It was harder than hell, but ultimately, I know it's going to do great things for our staff and for our town. This is something that money cannot buy, but this week, you've earned it. Now, the most important thing, 
please keep it up. This is your side to be part of the amazing setup, the Diamond Collection. I don't know if he deserves that. I mean, come on, guys. He said sorry a couple times, and they had a couple good people. They had a good night with the people you made come. <laughs> <laughs> that that sounded way dirtier than I meant it. But come on, I don't, he doesn't. He, everyone's giving him so much credit. Thank you. You deserve this. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Well Safe done. journey. Well he done. really did awaken me, put a fire in me, and I want him to come back and say, "You really did it." That's our goal. Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Whew. A beautiful day. I can't believe those storage units are still there. If I was Robert. I'd like Ari in one of them. <laughs> now that's good. If I can get rid of Ari that way. All right, let's get an update on the Juniper Hill Inn. Many of the staff featured in the episode were no longer working at the hotel by the time the show aired, and there was a new chef in the restaurant. Holy fuck, really? Ju the Juniper Hill Inn closed after it went into foreclosure with debts of $1.1 million in April 2014. They posted on their website that they are no longer in business. Ari was arrested in July 2015 for assaulting a police officer. Yikes. The hotel was bought by Ken Lucci and sister Brenda Bradley in 2015 for $400,000 with plans to invest $500,000 to get the hotel up to code. Uh, and did they do that? Uh, I guess we'll never know. Hmm. I guess, and I, I guess that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Gee fucking whiz! Wow, Ari was a. Let's see, let's see if we could find Ari's mugshot. Let's see. This is this has got to be good, right? Let's see what his, what his mugshot looks like. Oh, <laughs> now that's good. So yeah, it was assault on a law enforcement officer with bond at five hundred dollars. Interesting. Looks like I can't really get much more information than that. But fuck, I guess it sucks to be Ari, huh? <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for this hotel hell. Uh, I got to be honest, it was a little disappointing. I, I expected it to completely go to shit, and it ended up good, even though they lost the place and went into debt and already got arrested. Um, <laughs> that didn't happen in the episode, so... Uh, a little disappointed, I gotta be honest. Hopefully you guys had fun. Um, if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Comment down below some more videos you'd like to see me react to or more episodes of Hotel Hell and whatnot. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time.